Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith, and uh, I'm going to talk about a recent um, peer-reviewed scientific paper um, looking. It's a it's a paleo it's a paleo um, climate study. Um, it looks at uh, ocean cores, so you basically drill, drop a cylinder, and drill into the ocean floor uh, with a hollow tube, and you pull up a core of sediment and then you analyze what's in the sediment so you can do carbon dating to get an idea of the dates and you can examine the um, size of the um, sediment particles etc and what you what we what what you find is that there's layers of um, rocks and small um, lithic uh, substances of lithic origin so li of land origin and the idea is that that um, glacier that uh, when glaciers calved into the ocean um, they would be scraping along the land surface and they'd pick up rocks and sediment and debris and then they'd break off and they'd float across the ocean um, and as they melt they would drop the uh, rock and uh, sediment, rock and gravel, etc., components that they've scraped off the land into the ocean. And this would happen periodically. So by looking at the record through the sediment core, through the marine sediment core, you could determine when these ice rafting debris events occurred. And these are known as Heinrich events. And I'll talk a little bit about the, you know, the basics of Heinrich events. Um, but the key thing to come out of this paper is that these events were thought to be caused, well, the trigger is really, has been unknown. There, there's a lot of complexity and it's not known what actually caused the initiation of these events. Um, but these inv events involved, you know, warming, melting, periods of intense calving, say off the Greenland or the Laurentide ice sheet when North America was covered uh, in the north with glaciers. Also, uh, you know, in Europe, calving of those. Um, so, and then, and then that would have a lot of ice floating in the North Atlantic. And when it melted, it would freshen the water, shutting down the thermohaline circulation, the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation then uh you know leading to ocean heating but from this paper what is new is that it appears that subsurface ocean warming preceded these heinrich events so actually what happened it appears is that the amok um, reduced intensity shut down went into a sort of a shorter mode that didn't penetrate so far into the arctic and what happened was that the surface, sea surface temperatures um, actually could drop, but you know, you go down a couple hundred meters, 150 meters in the North Atlantic, and that water temperature went up significantly, you know, four degrees, eight degrees, 10 degrees Celsius um, in that whole region. And that was the perfect warming depth to melt the glaciers on on melt the ice shells um from below and cause you know precipitate these heinrich events so that's what this new paper seems to indicate so what that means is we know that the amok is currently slowing and uh you know but it, the paleo records tell us that when the amok slowed you, you know the the subsurface ocean um warmed couple hundred meters down and that undercut the ice shell. So this is a mechanism that could greatly accelerate uh, loss of ice from Greenland. Um, so this is why it's, you know, very relevant to, to present day. So I'm going to swing my camera around and uh, get into these, um, get into the paper. But first of all, I'm going to talk about the Heinrich event. Uh, I'll come back to this diagram here, uh, which is in the paper, but basically this is the location of the main coring here. Um, this is Northern Greenland uh, um, 
ice coring here. Um, and uh, there was also marine uh, coring of the ocean floor here as well, but this is the main site here. So what we have here is, this is uh, the modern surface ocean condition in the North Atlantic. So we have the AMOC, or we, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation coming up here. This is a northern branch of it. Uh, so this is the uh, North, North Atlantic Current, which is the northern branch of the AMOC coming right up here, bringing heat. And then this here is the something called the Erminger Current here coming this way. And then meanwhile, we have the east, um, uh, Eastern Greenland uh, Current coming down here, Labrador Current going into the Labrador Sea and swinging around this way past Newfoundland. So these are the, this is the sea surface temperatures. We have, you know, very war warm water here. Uh, and uh, as you go up, the water cools. Uh, water, the purple area is close to zero. Um, and because it's, you know, generally salty, um, the freezing point is about minus 1.8 Celsius. So, uh, you know, in this, uh, the, the, this blue is five to 10 Celsius, um, 10 to 15 in here and uh, 15 and above here with, you know, the red going 20 to 25 Celsius. So this is the sea surf, this is modern surface ocean conditions in the North Atlantic. This is what we had when the Laurentine ice sheet was covering lots of North America. Um, we have the, um, the Hudson Strait. We've got this, there was a lot of iceberg discharge and the water currents coming this way. So these icebergs that were broken off, then they crossed the uh, North Atlantic here. And this is the IRD belt. This is the, um, the this is where the uh, iceberg rafted debris. So this is debris that was carried by these icebergs. As the icebergs crossed and melted out, they would deposit, they would drop their rocks onto the ocean floor and those would be picked up in the ocean cores here and here. So this is the region for the rafting. Um, so what really triggered this rafting Heinrich event was a warming of the water about 100, 150 meters down as opposed to that happening later and that happened as the AMOC uh, shut down. So that, that's the key part of the study. Um, this is a paper, it's open source. It's called Subsurface Ocean Warming Preceded the Heinrich Events. So I'll just talk about this first, why it's important, and then I'll go to what actually Heinrich events are. So although the global environmental impact of the Laurentide ice sheet destabilization, okay, so the last ice age, the ice was covering uh, North America, it's called the Laurentine Ice Sheet. As it was destabilizing, it affected the global current, the global <laughs> climate. Um, and these Heinrich events are well documented. Okay, the mechanism, however, driving these ice sheet instabilities where huge icebergs calved off and crossed the North Atlantic, um, the mechanism driving that event remains elusive. So in this paper, they report on 4M, 4M anifera based sub, subsurface uh, ocean. So about 150 meters of water depth is what um, the temperatures and, and uh, salinities, et cetera, were determined from the, from the marine um, sediment cores. So the ocean temperature and the salinity reconstructions from the sediment core showed a consistent pattern of rapid subsurface ocean warming, which preceded the transition into each Heinrich event identified in the same core over the last 27,000 years. So this re these results provide the first solid evidence for the massive accumulation of ocean heat near the critical depth, about 150 meters, to trigger melting of marine terminating portions of the Laurentine Laurentide ice sheet around Labrador Sea, followed by Heinrich events. So the repeated buildup of the subsurface heat reservoir in the subpolar Arctic closely corresponds to times of weakened AMOC 
indicating a precursor role of ocean circulation changes happening first, and then the warming um, underneath the surface happening, and then this would initiate abrupt ice sheet instabilities and cause these Heinrich events, the calving of the ice. And we would, the Hein after, during, and while the Heinrich event was occurring and while the ice was melting, all the iceberg rafted debris would then fall into the ocean and, you know, build up in the layers. So as we, so from the marine sediment core, we can determine when these events occurred. So from this, this is important to present day climate because we can infer that a weaker ocean circulation in the future, we know that the AMOC is weakening, this may result in accelerated interior ocean warming of the subpolar Atlantic. And that would be warming at that critical depth, 150 meters, and that would undermine the stability of modern marine terminating Arctic glaciers and the freshwater budget of the North Atlantic. So it could greatly accelerate Greenland uh, ice core melt. So this is, you know, in context why it's important. So let's just talk a little bit about the Heinrich event. So Wikipedia, Heinrich events, lots of good information. Okay, so a Heinrich event is a natural phenomena in which large groups of icebergs break off from glaciers and traverse the North Atlantic. They occurred during five of the last seven glacial periods over the past 640,000 years. Heinrich events are particularly well documented for the last glacial period, but they're notably absent from the penultimate glaciation period, so the one before the last one, the second to last. The icebergs that cross the North Atlantic, they carry rock mass that has been eroded by the glaciers, and as the glaciers melted, this rock material dropped to the seafloor as ice rafted debris, abbreviated to IRD, forming deposits called Heinrich layers. So you can see, here's an iceberg, lots of rocks on top of it, excessive numbers of rocks. As the ice melts, all these rocks fall in onto the seafloor. And as this, the sediments accumulate through the seafloor, you can see the periods when these rocks were, were dropped. Okay. Um, so the icebergs melting, of course, it causes vast quantities of fresh water to be added to the North Atlantic. Such inputs of cold and fresh water may well have alternate, altered the density-driven thermohaline circulation patterns of the ocean and often coincide with indications of global climate fluctuations. Okay, so this actually will, you know, assuming this new research pans out, it, it's actually the thermohaline that is slowing down first then the water, you know, at 150 meter depth is warming greatly, significantly, and then that's undercutting the ice, causing the Heinrich event, not the other way around. So it's like the chicken and the egg problem here. Various mechanisms have been proposed to explain the cause of Heinrich events, most of which imply instability of the massive Laurentide ice sheet. So this is a massive ice sheet that covered the Arctic and coastal regions, North America, you know, in, in the north. Continental glacier covering northeastern North America during the last glacial period. Other northern hemisphere ice sheets were potentially involved, including the fenno scandic So here's, there's, there's Norway here. The ice sheet was extending all over this region. Also, uh, you know, Iceland, Greenland um, ice sheet. But the initial cause of this instability is still debated, okay? So this paper, this new paper I'm talking about sheds a lot of light. So this is a very interesting chronology. Um, this is the last 20,000 years. Uh, so the age before present, here we are in the Holocene, going back in time, a little dip here in, in uh, temperature. This is the air temperature in, over Greenland in degrees Celsius. A uh, little dip here, we have a cooling. So, so uh, there, was a, there was a cooling here, the Younger Dryas, the warm period, the bowling Alarod, Pleistocene, la, la, the last glacial maximum about here, 21,000 years ago or so. So we got, you know, here is the Heinrich event, event H1. This is probably a Heinrich event here, calling it H0. So if you go back here, you know, and look at a 120,000 year time scale as opposed to just the last 20, 
Um, this was about 140,000 years ago here, present day here. So we had a warm period, the Eemian, and then this is the temperature fluctuating here to the Holocene. And we had these periods here where the, these are all the Heinrich events where you got the, so if you go, if you have a sediment core going back this far, you see at these different periods in the sediment core or ice core, you, uh, sediment core in, in the ocean. In this case, you get these different uh, ice rafted debris intervals here. These are the, the Heinrich events here. Here's where they fit on the, on the uh, scale um, for temperature. So they precede, you know, they preceded the Heinrich event warming. So, you know, here's, a, here's H4. Um, so the great, the warming here, warming and so on. So you can see this, is, the, there's Heinrich events that happen um, at many different times. Okay. So the strict definition is the climate event that causes the ice rafted debris layer, which is observed in the marine sediment cores from the North Atlantic. A massive collapse of Northern hemisphere ice shelves, the release of a huge number, huge volume of icebergs, and uh, then the icebergs spread across the North Atlantic and melted out and the rocks were dropped onto the ocean floor. So these events were rapid, probably lasting less than a millennium, a duration varying from one event to the next. Um, their erupt onset may occur in just a few mere years. Okay, uh, Heinrich events are clearly observed in many North Atlantic marine sediment cores covering the last glacial period. Um, the younger dryer the Younger Dryas is probably a Heinrich event. That would be called H0, so 12,000 years ago. And then H1, going back in time, 16.8 thousand years ago, 24,000 years ago. Okay, so these, if you go back in time, the, the H0 would be the um, Younger Dryas here, and then H1, H2, and so on. Okay, so... Um, so there's uh, the basically Heinrich events appear related to some, but not all of the cold period preceding the rapid warming events known as the Dansgaard Osher events, which are best recorded in the Greenland ice core. Uh, okay, so you get a, a warming, cooling, warming, cooling, you know, these periodic cycles that would occur here, um, basically. And... Uh, so Heinrich's original observations were of six layers in ocean sediment cores with extremely high proportions of rocks of continental or origin or, or so-called lithic fragments. Um, so these are uh, lithic fragments or lithics or pieces of other rocks that have been eroded down to sand size and now are sand grains in a sedimentary rock. Okay, so they're, but they're, they're fairly large size, so they cannot be transported by ocean currents. Thus, they have to have been carried by icebergs or sea ice, which broke off glaciers or ice shelves, and, and the debris in, embedded in the ice was dumped onto the seafloor as the icebergs melted. Okay, so... Um, and there's lots, so there's lots of other information, but those are based, that's the basic idea. And, you know, in the cause, uh, there's a theory called the binge purge model. Like, for example, on the Laurentide ice sheet, it would increase its mass as it, you know, because it was cold and this was the binge phase. And then when the ice sheet reached a critical mass, the soft, unconsolidated subglacial sediment formed a slippery lubricant over which the ice sheet slid in the purge phase. So then, you know, it could, there, a lot of ice could slide off. And then that, and then and once it, uh, you know, that would be the, the so, so it would go through these cycles, the binge, uh, you know, binge purge model. That was one model. Uh, another model was that the, um, the, the AMOC, uh, the Gulf Stream, you know, would shut off, turn on, shut off, turn on, um, and set up these Dansgaard Osher oscillations. Okay. So those are the, 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 some of the general background of, what these events are. 
But this paper shows, uh, I'll show you the data from this paper, but it basically shows that these um, Heinrich events were uh, preceded by subsurface ocean warming. Okay, so, um, so basically, uh, you know, just to, the, the deposition of ice rafted debris layers in the glacial North Atlantic, these are known as Heinrich events, provides evidence for a substantial freshwater release via melting icebergs in response to past instabilities of the Laurentide ice sheet. Although the impact of these Heinrich events on global climate has been studied thoroughly during the last decades, the driving mechanism between the episodic iceberg discharge during Heinrich events is a matter of ongoing debate. A commonly discussed hypothesis is that there's periodic unstable flow of the Laurentide ice sheet controlled by internal ice sheet oscillations under otherwise stable environmental conditions. This is a binge purge hypothesis. Um, it's assumed that the massive freshwater release during Heinrich events initiated strong disruptions of the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, and surface ocean cooling of the North Atlantic. However, surface ocean temperature and ice rast rafted debris um, IRD proxy data from the high latitudes of the North Atlantic indicate that surface ocean cooling occurred hundreds to thousands of years earlier than the ice rafting events. And proxy data of the AMOC strengths show that deep ocean circulation or the AMOC weakened prior to the Heinrich events, not as a result of the Heinrich events. Okay, so this is the key sort of thing. Um, so it's, again, it's a chicken and an egg problem, you know, which, which happened first. So, so um, cores were taken here, and this is the main one that is studied. Now, I explained this in the, in the introduction. This is modern North Atlantic uh, surface ocean conditions, uh, the temperatures on this scale here, and the currents. And so the AMOC comes up here, the northern branch. This is the North Atlantic current, and then it comes right up, bringing heat up into here. Now, during the uh, Ice Age, when we had the Laurentine ice sheet covering much of North America, there'd be iceberg discharging coming from this way. In a Heinrich event, there'd be tons of icebergs breaking off the ice sheet, coming across here, melting out, and dropping the debris from the land into the, onto the ocean floor. So when we do a core and go back in time, we can see these different layers of rock when these Heinrich events occurred. Okay, so let's have a look at the data. So this is a digital core image, high resolution image of that core. So that's the core right over on this site here. Um, so what you can do is you can determine by different uh, elements that are in the, different materials that are in the marine sediment, you can are, act as so-called proxies for uh, the, the, sea surf, the sub sea surface temperature. So the temperature of the ocean water in the North Atlantic at that location above where the core is, basically, um, uh, you know, and this is in degrees Celsius. So this is the mean now, which is about, uh, I think it's about seven degrees Celsius or something. Yeah, it's, well, it's about six and a half on this scale. This is warm, that's present temperatures in those regions. This is warmer than present above, colder than present. This is going back in time, going to deeper depths inside the core. And what you can see is you can see, uh, you can see a rise in water temperature of about, uh, actually about eight or nine degrees here. And then you get Heinrich event two occurring and then you got a warming here up to about 12 degrees Celsius above present day. And then a Heinrich event occurred here. And here you get a warming here up about, of about 11 degrees. This is in the, the water, it's the water just under the surface, about 150 meters under. And then you get the Heinrich event or the H0 event here. So definitely the ocean is warming and then the event happens. And the same sort of thing was seen in this core. So the entire North Atlantic 
warmed significantly that undercut the ice the, on the Laurentide ice sheet, but also on the European ice sheets here. And that caused icebergs to break off and then the debris would be deposited as it melted out. Now these were significant events um, in the global, you know, significant events for affecting the global climate. Okay, so this is the key uh, figure and the key finding. Um, you can also, uh, the subsurface ocean warming is also linked to AMOC slowdowns. Okay, so you compare the proxy records of the North Atlantic uh, to North Greenland ice core project, temperature variability, and there's, there's three key observations. Well, basically what you can see here is, um, here's, here again is the, uh, is the, this is basically in degrees Celsius, the water temperature, okay, about 150 meters down. So you get the warming, and then the Heinrich II, warming Heinrich I, warming Younger Dryas. So I showed that before. Uh, this is the uh, proxy showing the, you know, whether the water is saltier or fresher. And this is showing the, uh, this is showing um, also, you know, the same sort of uh, thing here. It's, well, it, what it's showing is the calcium-strontium ratio. And uh, when there's ice rafted debris, it's got high. It's high in calcium carbonate, limestone. So the so the concentrations in the core um, go up, and and those are the Heinrich events. Okay, so uh, there's also uh, a proxy for the AMOC. So what happened is before these events occurred, the AMOC weakened. The AMOC weakened, the AMOC weakened, and uh, then the Heinrich event occurred. So the AMOC basically weakened, the water warmed up in the North Atlantic uh, below the surface, and then the that undercut the ice and caused the um, triggering of the Heinrich events. Okay, so why is this so significant? Okay, so subsurface ocean warming is a trigger for Heinrich events. Okay, the buildup of ocean heat near the grounding line of ice shells is a critical value in, in climate models to trigger a rapid retreat of the ice margin around the Labrador Sea. With continuous subsurface ocean warming, the ice shelf, shelf shrinks. It accelerates the ice flow at the grounded line, triggering the rapid surge of grounded ice and a massive iceberg discharge in the modeling simulations. Okay, so future AMOC slowdown and the buildup of ocean heat in the subpolar Atlantic. Okay, so now um, we need to just relate uh, this study of what happened in the paleo records. My foot just fell asleep, so I just shifted it. Um, floor is freezing, so it was, I was kind of sitting on my on my uh, legs there, but then they they cramped up. But anyway, okay. So how does this study to put this in modern context? Why is this important? Well, instrumental time series shows there's a long term increase in the North Atlantic heat content. So the oceans are warming rapidly. Okay long-term increase in the North Atlantic heat content since the early 1950s. There's, uh, there's a close relationship of this ocean warming to the accelerated mass loss of the Greenland ice sheet. However, it is yet unclear how AMOC variability contributes to the observed changes because of analytical limitations from relatively short instrumental time series. The most recent report of the IPCC projects a future decline of the AMOC due to anthropogenic warming in the 21st century. So the AMOC is slowing down. So new empirical data suggests that the AMOC has been evolved to a point close to a critical transition to its weak circulation mode. So we're getting close to a point where the AMOC can just shut off or switch to a weak circulation mode. But these findings suggest that past critical transitions to a weak AMOC mode are accompanied by the massive buildup of ocean heat 
in the western subpolar North Atlantic, triggering ice sheet instabilities during the Heinrich event. The projected weakening of the AMOC in the 21st century may result in an amplified increase in the interior ocean heat content of the North Atlantic at that critical 150, 100 to 200 meter depth of water. And if that water significantly warms, that could be critical for the stability of modern marine terminating Arctic glaciers and the freshwater budget of the North Atlantic. Okay, so we're not talking about a little bit of warming here of the ocean water. We're talking about, uh, you know, rapid increases in temperature. Okay, so, you know, if we go back up here, uh, where did it give the numbers? I'm trying to find the ocean temperature numbers. I mean, I can get them from the graph, but I think it mentioned it somewhere. Um, yeah, well, we can just go back to here. So here, the ocean warmed. Okay, so this is, I'm trying to read this peak here across here, about eight or nine degrees for this event. The ocean warmed about 12, 13 degrees Celsius. For this event, the ocean warmed about 10, 11 degrees Celsius. So the AMOC slows down the water at about 150 meters depth in, the, in, in this whole region, warms up significantly, that undercuts the ice, and then you can get rapid uh, loss of, of glacial ice. So this is a danger, the AMOC slowing down this whole region of water warming at 150 meter depth. Okay, not talking about sea surface temperature, it's about 150 meters depth. And then that undercutting the ice shelves and on Greenland, and once the ice shelves are undercut, then the main glaciers can flow much more quickly. It's like taking the cork out of the bottle and, and that can greatly increase Greenland uh, glacial melt, which then would cause rapid rise in sea level and rapid fre freshening of the uh, oceans here, uh, ensuring that the AMOC stayed shut down. So this is a very important study um, and it's open source. So you can just, uh, you know, Google the title, subsurface ocean warming preceding, preceded Heinrich events and look at what happened in the past and see how it's uh, relative to present day climate change. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.